Hello, my name is Felicia and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about how I make these beautiful Oregon crystal pyramids. So first, supplies. You will need a pyramid mold, of course. I got this one on Amazon. Um, I also have this large one too, which you can also get on Amazon. So the large one, I used this pyramid came from this mold. You can fill it up however large or small you want it to be. It goes up to seven inches. So you can make a pyramid that's seven inches tall, which is really cool. The biggest I've made so far is six inches. Um, and then this one comes out like this. Both are really beautiful. Um, so another thing you'll need is of course crystals. So I have some clear quartz points here. Um, I buy them in bulk, so I have lots of them. And I like to get the short ones. So I'll show you here. Um, got like a short one here because um, if you use a longer one, then it's going to take up a lot of space here and then you can't even start layering the crystals. Um, and then a lot of that space is going to be taken up with the clear quartz, but if that's what you like, then go ahead and use a larger one. Next, some copper wire. So I bought this on Etsy. Um, you can get it at the craft store or wherever. Um, and I like to buy the one that's easy to bend because some wires are really hard to bend. So you want to get the softer wire. Another thing you'll need is some metal shavings, which there's a lot on Etsy that you can get. So I have some brass shavings here for Oregon pyramid. You do need metal in the pyramid to make it have Oregon energy. Then another thing I like to add just because it's my preference, I like to add some gold flakes and some glitter. So I get these glitters at Walmart. I love it. Um, I've tried some other glitters, but this brand I like the best. And then these sacred geometry symbols. So uh, Metatron's cube and then flower of life. These you can get on Amazon also. Oh, and of course you'll need um, some crystals. So I have some rose quartz here, raw form of rose quartz. I have some amethyst as well as many other crystals. So whatever crystals you need, um, just make sure you have some of that to put into your pyramid. You're also going to need some little sticks to stir them with. You can use like little those skinny popsicle sticks, like not the actual popsicle sticks. Those are too thick and create air bubbles when you stir it. But um, I like to buy like the little skinny ones. Okay, so these are the little skinny ones I like to buy. The thinner the stick, the better, because I find that if the stick that I'm stirring the resin with is too thick, it's going to leave a lot of air bubbles. Um, and another thing, resin. So some resin to cast your pyramids in. I love this brand, um, Paduo, and I get this on Amazon. I've tried like, five different brands of resin and this is my favorite because it's like little to no odor and it comes out pretty clear. I've tried some resins that don't come out so clear and leave a lot of air bubbles and then I've tried some resins that stink really bad so um like that I can't even use it in the house and even if I use it outside the smell stays on me. Um, that's the polyester resin. I'm not a fan of it. Um, Maybe one day I'll find a way to work with it because I heard it works really well. But for now, I like um, this resin here. Then you're going to need some gloves. Another thing I like to have is um, colored packets. So this is soap dye actually. Um, and I bought a box of it on Amazon. And it colors the resin if I want to add layers of color. Um, I don't I didn't actually use the colored resin in here. I used glitter 
to add that layer of color. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about my process. So first I have to make sure that I have good energy going into these pyramids because crystals hold on to energy, good or bad. So I always make sure that the best energy is going into my pyramids. So before I get started, I will cleanse the room with Palo Santo or Sage. So I'm going to light a candle here. I make these soy crystal candles actually. So this candle has a crystal in it for good energy. All right, so I got this going. Um, I have some sage here. <laughs> As you can see, I use it a lot. So I'm just going to light the sage with this candle flame and give gratitude to the sage for the cleansing that it's giving me and the crystals. Okay, so there we go and then so then I just um, will wave this <laughs> around the room and then I will also sage myself, you know, cleanse off any negative energy. Okay, so I cleanse the room, I cleanse myself, and then I am going to get in a meditative state um, and cleanse the crystals. Okay, so after I cleanse the crystals with the Sage or Palo Santo, then I will set my intention and program the crystals with what you need. So um, when I'm programming the crystals, I'll hold them in my hand, think about the intention that I want, hold it up above my third eye, and then just, um, you know, telepathically or even say it out loud, just give the crystal my intention of what I want it to be used for. So whenever I make these custom, I always ask what the person wants or needs and I program that into the crystal. Um, if it's just one that I'm making, then, you know, if it's rose quartz, then I'll usually program it for more love, self-love, confidence, um, stuff like that, that, you know, rose quartz is good for. Okay, next, um, when you're preparing to mix the resin, I have a cheap plastic container, just a Dollar Tree one, um, because I heat up the water first, and then um, after I heat up the water, I will put the bottles of resin in there. This is not gonna mix well if the resin is not um, warmed up first. You don't want the water too hot. I let it get to like a small boil like tiny little bubbles and then um, I'll pour the water in here and then I will sit the bottles of resin and I try to sit it so that the the cap isn't submerged just in case like water somehow leaks into there which it has happened once that I'm not ruining a whole bottle of resin um, and then Sometimes resin does drip on the outside of the bottle, so then it gets this container all messy. So that's why I just use a cheap container um, to soak the resin in the warm water. Okay, so I got my water in here nice and steamy. Um, it's a little hot, so I'm actually gonna wait like a minute or two before I put the bottles in here, because if I heat up the resin too high, then, um, it's going to cure really quick. And I don't want that if I'm trying to, you know, work with layering in the crystals and stuff because I have had it harden before, <laughs> before I'm done um, doing my work. So you don't want it too hot. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute. Okay, so now while I let that resin sit, I'm going to show you guys um, how I, wrap my crystal in the copper wire. So, oh, you'll also need some wire cutters. So I'm just going to cut this and um, I cut it longer than I need. I'll show you what I do with it. And I'm just going to get close up here, but I'm going to start at the top. Oof. Come on. wrap it around once I got it on there I just keep turning okay. all right and then got it all 
all wrapped here, ready to put on the tip of the pyramid. Okay, so another thing you'll need, um, paper towels. Also, I put a tablecloth on my table because you will make a mess sometimes and um, you don't want to get that on your table. So um, I just put a plastic tablecloth from Dollar Tree. Also, you can protect the floor too. So you can never have too much protection here because sometimes messes just happen. Um, I just put a glove on one hand this whole glove shortage during the pandemic um, you know it's harder to find gloves and you do go through these quick because every time I do a layer on the pyramid then you know I have to put on fresh gloves I'm going to grab some paper towels and then when I take my resin out of the water just kind of dry it off so no resin drips okay you will need some plastic cups um, which plastic cups these plastic cups come with this resin so um, it's perfect so you'll need some plastic cups and then I will use my stirring sticks too okay now I got my resin heated up you'll see how it like moves more watery it's not as thick so First, um, I am going to pour a little bit in here. So the first part, you're going to pour some resin. And when I'm doing the tip, I only need a little bit of resin. So I have about 20 milliliters. And then the instructions say to measure in two different cups first, which I used to do, but um, I find that I can just mix it in the same cup. So this is the hardener and another 20, so 40 total. Okay, and now I'm just going to mix this. So I got my thin little metal stick and I am going to mix this for about two minutes. So you'll see like a lot of streaks in here when you're mixing. Um, you see a lot of streaks and you want to mix it until all the streaks are gone when it's completely clear. Okay so it's hard to see in the video but it's pretty clear now. There's no more streaks and you'll know how the streaks look when you mix it in person. It's just hard to catch on the video. So now that I have this all mixed, I am going to pour this into a second cup. Um, so. Scraping the sides here. And then I just wipe this stick off with the paper towel before the resin gets hard on it. Some, uh, some of the resin has gotten hard on it, so that's okay though. Okay, now I have my resin mixed. Um, when it's in the second cup, that's like all clean. I like to mix it a little bit more, just a little bit more. And I put it in a second cup just so there's no like unmixed residue from the last cup because we don't want any unmixed parts in here. Okay, nice and clear. Okay, clean this off again. All right, now I'm going to pour the rest. Okay, so I know it's a little hard to tell from this angle, um, but I'm going to pour little bit of resin in each pyramid about 10 milliliters of resin um, so that's maybe like an inch deep in these larger ones okay so just a little bit and then on this one just a little bit 
and I still have like 20 milliliters of resin left, but I always mix a minimum of 40 when I do it because I notice when I mix a little bit, it's harder to mix it. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and just poke the tip so that um, there's no air bubbles in the tip. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna poke the tip here with my little pointy piece so that the tip comes out nice and pointy. Okay, next one. Poke that tip in there. Okay, and then another thing I like to do is just um, barely burn off the top layer. Being careful not to burn my mold. I don't want to do that and ruin it just to get rid of air bubbles. Oop, there we go. And not too much too, because then it's going to leave like black smoky looking thing in the resin. Okay, so I don't now want. I'm going to put my tip in here. Um, one way of doing it is just like that. Um, yeah. Another way I actually left this one long and then I'm going to um, hold it together with a pencil. Okay so I just put a straw you can hold it together like that. Okay so I have the clear quartz at the top. I'm going to put a little bit more some air bubbles there. real quick okay so now I wait for it to cure while the crystals are curing in here I have music playing healing music so usually I'll go on YouTube and I'll look up heart chakra music or something like that and a bunch of like meditative music playlists will come on so I pick the one that I like that way these crystals are curing at healing frequencies. It's great for the crystals. Um, I'll also play my singing bowl for a minute. Um, and then I am attuned to Reiki. So I'll wave my hands over here for a minute on each crystal, just sending the healing Reiki energy into there. So if you're attuned to Reiki, that is a great tool to have when making these for all that extra good energy. Okay, I'm back. So the pyramids have been curing for about seven hours. You don't need to wait that long, but um, this is the first chance I have to get to them. So now I'm going to start on the next layer. So you see here, it's already cured, it's hard. So what I'm going to do is get in here with the wire cutters and cut as close as possible so that I get off all that wire. So I'm just gonna do that with these next two here. Okay, so I got my crystals ready. They're already cleansed and charged. I got black tourmaline, malachite, rose quartz, and some amethyst. <laughs> And then I have my sacred geometry symbols that I'll be putting in there. There's Metatron's cube. There is flower of life. And then here I have Virgo with the moon. You can see I put some tape here because I'm working upside down. So um, this is going to be upside down in the pyramid. So I need to put some tape so that it holds its place there. Okay, so as you can see here, I got the pendant already taped on there in place. So I have about 100 milliliters of resin mixed. I'm just gonna move these out a little bit um, so I can pour this. Um, I'm gonna do different glitter. I'm gonna do blue glitter for this one. So I'm just gonna pour, I don't know, like 40 in here. Okay, 
for this pyramid. Okay, and throw in that blue glitter. I don't wanna do too much. Okay, that's good. It's just all about preference, so um, I'm using malachite for this layer. So I think the green and blue look really pretty together. I'm going to pour the glitter just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to layer in my malachite. about as much as I can fit in there and I'm gonna put a little bit more glitter okay so you see I didn't get it all the way up to the tape of course I don't want to mold in the tape there the next layer here is gonna be the black tourmaline I have this cup and I'm going to use pink glitter. I'm going to mix all of this pink glitter in here. Like that. Very um, subtle. Okay, so first I'm going to do Flower of Life. This is cool because this sticker is um, a metal sticker too. And then I'm gonna place it right there. Make sure it fits in good, okay. That it's centered, good. Okay, so then I'm gonna pour just a little bit, just a little bit. And now I got my rose quartz, so put the rose quartz in. Okay, um, yeah, I'll throw in one more. Okay, and now some amethyst. Okay, now I'm going to put Metatron's cube on this one and get it centered here. Oh my gosh, my hair. Yep, I'm gonna pour a little bit of this first. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Now, let's go.
Okay, so it's the next morning now. And the resin is ready to add on another layer. Okay, so I'm ready to layer this on. Um, I didn't use gloves, so I kind of got a little bit of stickiness on my hands. So if that happens, you can always um, put some hand sanitizer on. And then wipe it off with a paper towel. And that helps get the stickiness off. I took off my gloves because it's easier to handle the gold flakes and everything. Ooh, almost spilled that. Um, with my fingers. So I have about 40 milliliters of resin, um, resin here. And I'm going to mix in some blue glitter. Okay. And some gold flakes. I've had this for months and you only need a little bit. So I just put the flakes in like that. And then I'm going to stir. And when I stir, it breaks up the gold flakes that you see there. That is so beautiful. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to pour a little here. Just kind of coat that first. And then I don't want any flakes in front of the pendant, so I'm going to move them out of the way. Okay, and then just kind of go around here, around the edges, so we have smooth edges. Okay. I like to push the flakes out to the edge so that they're seen. And then I'm going to add the black tourmaline. Mm -hmm. So this black tourmaline is already um, cleansed and charged, intention set, and everything like that. Okay. Hmm. Maybe like a couple more. Mm, one right here. That's pretty good. Okay, that's all I need. Um, then just top it off. So I just want to cover up that black tourmaline because the next layer will be the metal. Okay, that's good. Um, and then again, moving out the gold flakes. I don't want it in front of my pendant because we want to see that pendant. And then I'm moving these gold flakes to the edge because they're not going to be seen in the middle anyway. So, moving them out to the edge where they can be seen. So pretty. Okay. Burn off some air bubbles. Be careful not to burn your mold. Just be careful doing this. And now I'm going to move on to adding the metal here. Okay, so I already measured out like, oh, this is about 40 milliliters of brass. So I'm going to put a little bit in here first. Okay. And with the metal, so you wanna have a 50-50 ratio of resin to metal, okay? so. Um, you don't want to have, you know, just a little bit of metal. You want to have an even proportion. So I measure out all the resin I put and make sure that I'm putting enough metal. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to move it around in there. Just a little bit more. Okay. 
There we go. Flatten that out. And then just top that off. Get some more. Okay. Yes. Let that soak in there. I'll have to mix some more resin right now. Whoop. Okay, so I am going to add the last layer of color to this pyramid here. Um, throw a lot more in there like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I like to add this blue with it. These look amazing together. Some ocean vibes. Oh, it looks so good. Let's mix it and see how that looks. Mm, I think that's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, I already <laughs> layered these two. So I added my um soap dye packets to the resin and that's it and it just depends on how deep you want the color you can start off with a little bit and add more if you want a deeper color okay so oh my gosh this color looks so beautiful okay now i'm gonna pour it look at that oh my gosh Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the cleanup. Um, I reuse these, so um, I have to clean them, you know? So I just spray this with multi-purpose cleaner. I used to use alcohol before the whole pandemic, and now I can't find any in the stores anymore. But this actually works better than rubbing alcohol. Um, then this cup, try to get all that resin off. I'll go through it more than once. one last time just to get it clean and then after this i am going to take it to the kitchen and just um wash it with dish soap and i have my own sponge for this you know um yeah it's pretty clean there i just wash it with dish soap just to get off any extra sticky residue because soap help, helps get that off. So right before I wash it, I'll spray it one more time with the multi-purpose and then um, wash it and that's it. Okay, so I have my three pyramids here all ready to unmold. I'm going to start with the small one here. It's so beautiful. 
amethyst and black tourmaline with Metatron's cube. Okay, so that's this one. Rose quartz and amethyst. Ooh, beautiful. Flower of life. This one, I'm so excited. Okay. Look at that. Oh, it's so blue. It's beautiful. One more time. Yes. Oh my gosh all right and that is it um, that's how I make my pyramids so um, you know it's whatever preference you have I have different styles that I do not just these but um, yeah generally this is how I typically make them so let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching bye